Let's start with a recently created project. We can start Trace 700 by clicking the desktop icon, and yes, I would recommend keeping a desktop icon. When we open Trace, we'll notice that we have several options. Right now, we will notice that we can create a new file, but in this case, we are opening an existing file. Upon first look, you will notice that Trace 700 is broken down into several categories. Each category is accessed by the click of a button. Upon clicking each button, you will notice that each category is divided into smaller increments, called tabs. For those of you familiar with tabbed internet browsing, this is a very similar concept. Now, before we start inputting information, we need to cover a few things. It is important to plan properly whenever doing a building design and energy model, or both. One of the first things I recommend is to familiarize yourself with the logic used in Trace. In the software, the virtual building is constructed incrementally. The increments align with the steps taken when constructing an actual building. This will be a central theme of our training, as this thought process is critical for success in Trace 700, as well as any other energy modeling software. Remember, the steps required to construct a real building are about the same when constructing a virtual building. Which also means we can use the same thought process as is used when making decisions. With that said, let's take a look at each of these individual buttons and see how they coincide with the construction of an actual building. If we take a look at the first button, labeled Project Information, we are simply defining the project, which is really the first decision made when constructing any building. The only difference in Trace is that it is not necessary to enter anything in the project information. However, it is recommended simply to keep organized and will come in handy later when we look at multiple alternatives. In general, the decision to construct a building is followed by finding a location for the building. Location is key to many aspects of the building, but when it comes to design and energy, the location decides the weather the building will see. Thus, the next step in our model is to select the weather location which is simply done by clicking on the proper region of the map. Later, we will go into much further detail and learn about international weather as well as weather overrides. Before a building is ever constructed, a bill of materials must be determined. Is it a wood-framed building, steel-framed, a cinder block building, or is it all of the above? The building operating schedules must also be determined. Templates, when used effectively, define the nature of the building. They are, in a sense, cookie cutters and can be used to make quick changes or quick corrections, say for instance when dealing with an indecisive architect. While we won't go into further detail right now, it will suffice to say that templates should be used whenever constructing a building of 10 zones or more. It is also important to mention that templates should always be created before creating rooms, which is why it is listed first. Creating rooms is equivalent to laying out the building geometry. If templates have been used effectively, it is likely that most of your rooms will only require you to fill out the single sheet tab. As a result, creating rooms is basically equivalent to the blueprints of the building. Once the rooms are laid out, the question to answer is, how will we deliver air to these rooms? Of course, there are many options, and most of them are available to, to select under Create Systems. This tells Trace a number of things about air delivery. Please keep this in mind as it does not tell us how the air will be treated. It only tells us how the air will be delivered and that it will be conditioned.
When a system is selected, the next step is to determine how the ductwork will be laid out. This is done in Trace by assigning rooms to systems. This is one of the easiest things to do in Trace with a simple drag and drop interface. However, it requires proper understanding of zoning. At this point in the building construction, the ductwork is effectively laid out, the fans or air delivery mechanisms have been determined. So the next question is, what equipment is attached to the ductwork to cool the air? This is implemented under Create Plants. When considering cooling systems, Create Plants is representative of the refrigerant side and not the air side which is defined by create systems. It is very important to understand that key difference. Since systems and plants are defined separately, it is necessary to assign them. For example, let's take a building with rooftop air conditioning unit and select assign systems to plants. This is basically like hooking up a rooftop air conditioner to the proper set of ductwork. The drag and drop interface makes this step very easy to do in Trace. However, understanding the concept is much more important. Once the building is laid out and all the rooms, zones, systems, and plants are determined, the building energy can be determined at any given period. However, the energy tells us nothing about cost unless we know exactly the price of that energy. Therefore, the local tariff, or an average tariff, must be selected under Define Economics. The rate structure is the only necessary item here. But there are many other options that allow you to perform not just an annual analysis, but a life cycle analysis. Once all of these parameters are defined, we can perform our calculation by selecting Calculate and View Results. If we have entered everything we need, all four boxes will be checked. If we have missed anything, a box will remain unchecked. In this case, we can see that we have missed something. A great feature in Trace 700 is that we can simply click on the box that says not ready and it will tell us exactly why. A common reason is that a user forgets to assign systems to plants. If all of the boxes indicate the calculation is ready, the calculation may be performed by clicking the Calculate button. Upon completion of the calculation, the report screen pops up and we are able to view a large range of reports. In future lessons, we will discuss reports and every other topic we have mentioned in greater detail. I hope this introduction has been beneficial and thank you for visiting EnergyModels.com.